So this next one, big money is already in crypto, um, but it's slow. So what's going on here? So announcements have become fast and furious about traditional financial firms investing in digital assets or crypto startups. So often, in fact, that's blink and you'll miss them. First of all, who writes like this? Who wrote this? Let's see. This is, uh, I'm just, I know who it is. It's Alex Maschioli, and uh, he's the head of institutional services at Bequant, a leading crypto and digital assets prime broker coming from traditional hedge fund space. Uh, he's been in the game since 2017, advising crypto funds and institutional investors globally. Good for that guy, right? So first off, I like Alex. I've liked uh, the way he writes and, ex and uh, describes things ever since we covered an article. This is on July 23rd, which talks about don't expect banks to jump on the OCC crypto news. And uh, everybody had been making a big deal about this because the OCC said that banks could custody cryptocurrencies. And everyone's like, this is going to be fantastic. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be the end all be all. And Alex was one of the few ones like, wait a second, what are you talking about? I'm in this game, and I can tell you right now, they're not going to do squat because they're slow. And uh, I covered this. It was a fantastic read. I'll link at the very end. And uh, ever since then, I've been listening to what Alex is talking about. So before we get into this, this article about, you know, the big money moving in, but it's very slow, what we're talking about as far as trading goes, it was an article about Alex's company, uh, Bequant. And one of the things that was concerning to me was about the reduction in trading time and as far as like speeding up to milliseconds. So this was a quick one and it just talks about um, where are we at? Bequant now in crowded prime brokerage race. Alex says Ferrari sells cars so we're going to racing. Bequant built a crypto exchange to go into prime brokerage. That's their sole purpose. And that's from Alex Maschioli. If you don't know, prime brokers are facilitators for financing and trading for deep, let me say that again, deep pocketed institutional investors. While that digital asset space doesn't have a lot of prime broker options, currently several crypto firms, including Coinbase, Bitco, and Genesis Trading, have announced just in recent months their intention to build prime brokerage. And these guys have been doing it for over two years now. And I got to tell you, so when we're talking about getting the big players, the whale of whales in, into uh, this space, I think this is the missing piece. However, there might be a downside. This is a quote from CEO George, George Zaria, where he talks about, to compete in a newly crowded market, Bequan's connection to signature bank Signet will allow the firm to more easily settle fiat for more clients. It's an important transition between the legacy financial markets and the new digital market. So they are the ones laying that track, building those institutions up so they can do all these things in our space. So again, linking everything together. Moving down. In traditional world, investment banks like Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley connect clients to hedge funds, pension funds, and endowments. The quant is connected to 11 sources of liquidity, including Hit BTC, Binance, OKX, Huobi, Bittrex, Bitfinex, Deribit, and Bequant's own exchange and plans to expand its exchange connections to a dozen by the end of this year, which is coming up pretty darn fast. These exchanges are venues that our team has one-on-one -on -one relationships with. Maschioli said, this isn't as simple as dropping in APIs. And I got to tell you, it's not about what you know. It is about who you know, and it's all based on relationships. So if these guys are going in there building relationships with all these different uh, companies and institutions, I got to tell you, that's going to pay dividends massively later on the line. And that's why I think it's impressive, not just about, like he says, dropping APIs, talking to a face, talking to a person and getting those connections. But here's where it becomes concerning. And we'll jump back to the article. It states, one of the issues that we've had with some of our exchanges is that rate per second allocation, uh, the CEO said. If you trade a high frequency trading strategy, you may want to opt into a higher rate per second allocation. Bequant's internal trading averages around 400 microseconds per trade, which is close to the London Stock Exchange's 150 microseconds. So if you're a day trader, which I am not, uh, this might be bad news for you. Uh, but I got to tell you, it's, it's inevitable. And why I think it's a bad news is because this is kind of squeezing the little guy out. When you start to get these micro transactions or these, these super fast transactions down to milliseconds, uh, all these things that are happening on top of the AI that we just saw, I mean, it just is a, it, it, it is a worrisome type of outcome. And this actually comes down to a story that I had read a, a while back, which talked about the uh, new transatlantic cable built to shave five milliseconds off stock trade. So if you don't think that uh, time is important, listen to this. Hibernian, how was that right? Atlantic is building an undersea fiber optic cable that will stretch from New York to London. Now keep in mind, this was uh, a article on 2011. This is already done. It allows computers to, comp to complete financial transactions just five milliseconds faster 
than their competitors. Finance is now increasingly dominated by automated trading, and to a computer, five milliseconds is an eternity. So I don't know how much it costs to uh, create this type of cable from New York all the way to Europe, but uh, I'm guessing it wasn't cheap. But I'm guessing, I'm also guessing, there was a reason for it, and it's probably because it's a lot of money that they're making. So anyway, moving back to the original article here, Alex talks about hedge funds and retail focused products are celebrating major fundraises and traditional banks are leading or planning to lead investment rounds in blockchain firms. And if we're talking about hedge funds and, you know, getting the institutional players involved, I mean, we can look no farther than digital at, or to a grayscale where they're just dominating right now. I mean, this was in quarter one, 2020. So so uh, around the beginning of April, they put this out. They had 2.2 billion assets under management. Now it's, I think it's like 4.5. I know it's in the fours. That's uh, quite a bit of an increase. And right here, it states majority of investments come from institutional investors, dominated by hedge funds. So pretty much what we're talking about here. Then it's then he states a publicly traded company has converted a significant chunk of its balance sheet to Bitcoin. I don't know what he's talking about about there. Uh, and US regulators have agreed to let banks custody crypto assets on the past two months. And this was the article we covered about OCC uh, a couple of weeks ago where Alex wrote it and I agreed with him. And he said banks aren't going to do anything, uh, not for a while, because they're slow as snails. And that's true. These developments are all massive signals to the rest of the financial world. It is, but it just takes time. So further on, he states, a normally quiet season has seen a historic flurry of activity in the crypto and blockchain space. It's been a transformational time that's put the old guard on notice and forced them to turn on a dime uh, from positions they previously held on to the digital asset space. And yeah, it just makes sense, right? I mean, what has been happening globally, we have still seen a massive increase in digital assets and cryptocurrencies. I mean, look what's going on. I mean, the economies in different countries are I'm just getting lambasted, but here we are in the traditional stock market and more so in cryptocurrency uh, having these huge runs. So what's going to happen in two, three, five years? I think the sky's the limit, but just an opinion. Moving on, it states, all this was recently bolstered by the uh, OCC, which we talked about. It allows banks to charter uh, custody of crypto assets, but this was a good piece here. It says, but the smart money knows this change will not happen overnight. It will be a while before we have a Wells Fargo custody Bitcoin or Northern Trust hold a hedge funds ETH. That's why I like to listen to Alex because he talks to these people that maybe you or I are not privy to. And then here talks about even Goldman Sachs, which famously said at the start of the summer that Bitcoin is not a suitable asset for an investment or an asset class at all has since you turned and named a new head of digital assets earlier this month, and they will be getting into the game by talking about maybe doing a stable coin. So it's amazing. They go from saying, ah, it's not even an asset class, cryptocurrency, digital assets, but we're going to do one. So a bunch of liars. The hedge funds, Pantera and NYDIG, also recently announced they have pulled in nearly $175 million and $190 million respectively. So not too bad. Sentiments clearly swing in favor of digital assets. I can see it myself. This is because sophisticated investors, uh, big clients, are increasingly talking about Bitcoin and Wall Street is scrambling to get up to speed and satiate client demand. And I got to tell you, like when I see this, I'm like, this is like the biggest duh moment. I mean, why wouldn't they? It's like they're sitting on their hands and just going, well, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But if you look at it, I mean, for Pete's sakes, Bitcoin and Ethereum have been the investment of the decade. And there is a video that I put out um, that just looks over the last 10 years, the highest performing stocks and, uh, and different investments. Uh, and you can see, right, in 2010, we had Netflix was dominating everything and Domino's Pizza, who knew? Uh, also dominating Amazon, MasterCard, Visa. But if we speed this up, uh, we see Netflix still there, Lululemon, I mean, for all you ladies who like to do yoga. And then look at this, from out of nowhere, here comes Bitcoin in 2013. And if we just play this a little bit longer, we can see that uh, Bitcoin not only dominates, but it's going to actually massively outperform everything. So when they started to talk about all these things like, ah, oh, well, maybe we should do a little bit, maybe we should do a lot. Uh, I don't see the, the problem here. Just do the things you're supposed to do and talk to your clients about like, look, it's not like this just came out of nowhere and we're talking about tulips. This thing's been happening over the last 10 years. So uh, just do whatever you want. Bitcoin or Ethereum seems like a, not a not a, uh, a difficult choice, but that's just me talking, just some uh, armchair investor who's just throwing out random advice. But I just look and see what's happening, and I kind of makes sense to me. And I got to finish this up. He states, 
The clock is tipping, ticking. Many firms are still sitting on the bench waiting to come into the game. Big question is, where are we at? Are we in the first quarter or the second quarter? And no one knows what's going to be the top. No one knows what's going to be the bottom. But I got to tell you, right now, this is history being made. And he's right. If you're in this space right now, if you're listening to this video, this is the most exciting time. It's not exciting. I mean, it is exciting when, you know, you know, maybe Bitcoin goes to a million or something crazy like that. That's exciting, right? But as time goes on, we're going to look back at this like, man, can you believe that the prices were this much? And can you believe we got in this early? This is insane. And here we are. So I, I've started businesses and some make it and some don't. But I got to tell you, the most exciting part is the startup, is laying the track and building the foundation. And then when everything gets up to, up to snuff, you can just kind of sit back and go, we did it. Anyhow, I will tell you this. These articles that uh, were written, it just leaves me with a couple more questions. So what I did was I reached out to Alex. I go, hey, hey, man, if you're not busy, answer these questions for me because I don't get it. So because of that, let's jump in the office and have Alex answer. All right.